This is the Planar PL2210MW LCD monitor. It was manufactured in 2008. Its maximum resolution is 1050 by 1680. Not quite equal to a high definition TV, but still pretty good. It has VGA and DVI inputs, but no HDMI. A very common problem in monitors of this age are bad capacitors on the power supply board. And this will often be seen with the monitor just not turning on at all, or the screen flashing or the power light flashing on and off periodically. This monitor has a problem. We're going to make a quick tutorial on how to tear this monitor down and remove the power supply board so we can get it on a bench and, and troubleshoot it and work on it. We're going to remove the back off the Planar PL2210MW monitor. Start, we'll start by removing the stand. This is held on by only two screws. Now we have three fine thread screws here, here, and here. We'll go ahead and remove those. And now we have three longer coarse thread screws. And we'll take those out. Next we have these four screws here. These are uh, fine thread countersunk screws. V these are spaced to the Visa standard so you can hook up. So you can connect a monitor to, a, uh, to another stand. Okay, that's got all the screws off the back, particularly across the bottom here. Now we can remove the back off the monitor. Fortunately, there are no electronics connected to the back, so we can remove that straight off without breaking any wires. Along the bottom of the monitor, we have some of these little indentations here, here, here. What we need to do there is get a screwdriver in here and sort of depress that little tab, and that, that will help us drive this bottom part of the back off, depress it, and you can see it's opening up a little bit here. Okay, so we have this bottom part of the monitor partially opened. Unfortunately, the rest of this thing is really clipped on really tight very hard to pry the rest of this off. What I do in these cases is I just use a screwdriver and a rubber mallet and I get it in between here and I just kind of pound away. I get it in like so. Now I know this is kind of barbaric, but I come in at a very steep angle. You don't want to drive it straight in or you're going to be breaking things. I want to come in at just a very steep angle to kind of put a little wedge. And if you can open it up just a little bit, then you can get your screwdriver this way, again at a very steep angle. Sometimes use a really big screwdriver. And just start driving it apart all the way around. And you just keep working your way all the way around, all the way around. And of course, the, the bottom part is already is already open. We're going to go down the side right here. There we go. There's one side. Now, with all of those clips separated, we can then just lift the back right off and expose the inside of the monitor. Now, we're going to take off these 
screws that hold on the VJ and the DVI uh, sockets. I'm going to start it with a, these needle nose because they're on kind of tight. I'm going to get them going here a little bit. I'm going to use this little nut driver here to take them off the rest of the way. We will remove the cables to the compact fluorescent lights. I like to get a little tiny flathead screwdriver underneath this uh, clip on here and lift it up and then I can just pull it right out. Now we're going to remove this plate. It's held on with four screws. These two screws are long coarse thread screws. These two screws are short fine thread screws. We'll take them off now. Now this plate can be removed, revealing a lot of the wires. Now to take this piece off, there's a short fine thread screw here and another one here. We'll take those off now. Now this part is loose, but it is being tethered by these various wires. Most of these wires hook into the processor board and it's held on with one additional screw underneath. It's gonna take a short Phillips head screw to get that one screw off and then we can release this board. And there it is, another fine thread short screw. And now this board sort of drops out. And now we have a lot more room to work. And we can finally get at the power supply board, inverter board combination. It's held on with four screws. One, two, three, four. They're all short fine thread screws. We'll take them off now. Now this board is loose. You can get a good look at it. And this board is connected to, to the processor board by a single connector. We disconnected here. And now we have it free. Here's that power supply inverter board on the bench. Fairly typical of power supply inverter boards from this era. You see there's a white line here that runs through the board. This separates the hot side from the cold side. The hot side, this is the AC input from the wall current. And the cold side is the DC output generating the various voltages needed by the monitor. Now on this side, we have the inverter portion, including this one high voltage transformer, which is driving all four of the CCFL lamps. As you can see on this board, there are color changes caused by extensive heat. There are a lot of uh, heat generating components around here, including two big uh, MOSFET transistors on the other side. And this transformer gets pretty hot as well. Now I have encountered three of these monitors, and in all three cases, these two capacitors were bad. These are C846 and C847. They are both 1000 microfarad 10 volt capacitors. In almost all cases, these capacitors look normal. There was none of the typical swelling that we see from bad capacitors. On visual inspection, they look completely normal. It wasn't until I tested them with a capacitance ESR meter that I could see that they were bad. Now, the bad capacitor is this one here. It's branded Elite, E-L-I-T-E, -E, 1000 microfarad, 10 volt, and it's brown in color. Even though it looks normal, when you hook it up to an ESR meter, this is what you get. You get a very high ESR. It doesn't read any capacitance. It just indicates that it's leaking current internally. A completely bad capacitor that looks otherwise normal. Now, these capacitors provide voltage to the logic board, and a lot of the problems you'll see with this monitor look like they're coming from the logic board. You know, the, the thing won't turn on, or the, the power light flashes on and off. 
or you'll get crazy colors and stripes and things on the screen. That's because the voltage to the logic board is too low. Three out of three boards had these two capacitors bad or, or six out of six capacitors. So if you have one of these monitors and you're having any problems, there's a very good chance that these two capacitors are bad in your monitor as well. So even if you don't have any way to test capacitance, you might just empirically replace these two capacitors and see if it solves your problem. I mean, they, they only cost pennies after all. Now, in the case of this particular monitor, these two capacitors were also bad. These supply voltage to the uh, high voltage transformer. They are C915 and 916, but they've been subjected to so much heat, we shouldn't be surprised they were bad. They were good in the other two monitors that I looked at. Of course, anything could go wrong with one of these monitors, and this is not going to cover all the possible failures. You're going to have to do your own troubleshooting, but just be aware that these two capacitors have a very high failure rate and are responsible for a lot of the problems. Given the fact that it was three out of three monitors, there's a very good chance that that'll be the problem with yours as well. Now, of course, it might not be. It could be something else, but this is a good place to start looking. Now, reassembling the monitor is easy. Just follow the instructions in the video in reverse order. And that should do it.